So today we're doing some unscheduled summer pruning. Um, so, got my secateurs, I've got my bucket. Let's go greenhouse. I have to come under the camera to come in. Oh. So today's video then comes about because Linda from our Patreon community actually asked the other week if I had a video about summer pruning your bell peppers. Um, and although I have done this sort of thing in lots of vlogs over the last six years, I haven't done a specific video on it. So that's what we're doing today. So thank you, Linda. This is for you. Right, OK, I have four bell peppers grown in the greenhouse. And I'm doing my best to be on shot because um, I'm being rather rudely interfered with by a tomato here. There is midsummer in my greenhouse. There's really no room to move. But I've got four peppers here. Three of them are King of the North. King of the North is my favourite pepper variety. It is just so reliable for me and I get whopper crops from it. This one, which you guys, if you're regular viewers, will know is now called Steve. This is the pepper from my single seed challenge. It's different from King of the North because it's these long peppers. But also, this is the third generation grown from saved seeds from a hybrid plant. So that's what this guy is. For today, I'm going to show you summer pruning and I'm going to do it on one of my King of the North peppers because I know a lot of you guys are growing these with me as you do in other years. So I just have to work out which one will be the best one to let you guys see on camera, which is the biggest issue. So I will start today's video with a caveat as always, that you do not need to prune your bell peppers in summer, okay? It's something you can do, however, your peppers will grow absolutely fine if you don't do this. So, in which case you'd be justified in saying, well, why are you doing it then? Okay, here goes. Full confession, I haven't really gone to this extent any other year. It's not something I normally do as standard practice. I'm doing it today in this fashion simply for you guys so that you can see what's going on. I do prune, and you will have seen me doing this in various vlogs over the last six years. I do a lot of tidying up, taking the leaves off, taking away any branches that's getting cluttered, but I'm going to do it with a bit more of a system today to let you see how this can be done. Now, there are kind of four reasons why you might think about doing this. So reason number one, as you can see, I've got heaps of foliage and under that, so many branches all over these plants. I've basically got a wall of pepper plants here. What that means is there's a restriction on the amount of airflow that's getting around those plants and on the amount of sunlight that's getting in to the fruits on those plants as they grow. Now, the airflow is good because it helps to prevent diseases, it helps to prevent things like moulds and funguses and the sunlight getting into those fruits is good because it gets that little bit of heat on the fruits and it helps them to ripen faster. Now, the second reason is about production. All the regular viewers on this channel will know that I did a huge experiment over about a year and a half where I looked at the effects of pruning your pepper plants. So I hard pruned an overwintered pepper and I, what was called, topped just my standard little seedlings and then I left some that I didn't touch at all. And then throughout the season, we compared how they grew and the fruits they were having on them and then at the end of the season, we did a big tally up of how much fruit I got from them and what I thought of the process. So from that, I know that I'm a fan of pruning my pepper plants, that it does help to increase the production of fruits, which is why I still top them. And that's the second reason people would do this summer pruning, is to help with the production of fruit because you're encouraging your plants to really focus on the branches you leave behind and get lots of fruit going on them. So the third reason then, I've mentioned that getting more airflow and light in there really helps to prevent diseases and fungus and moulds and that kind of thing. And it does that because of you're getting more airflow and sunlight in there. But it also means that you get less pests or when you do get pests, they're much easier to spot. One of the things I find is pepper plants can attract lots of whitefly and aphids and even things like earwigs. And when it's a whole bank of foliage like this, it can be quite hard to keep on top of that. 
So just tidying it up a bit just helps to keep on top of your pests. Okay, the last positive then, number four, is that once you have pruned them down to a certain amount of branches, there is going to be less to support. Okay, and again from experience, my King of the North peppers are such prolific producers that I have actually lost entire branches of almost ripe peppers because the weight has just meant that branch has snapped off the plant. Or even worse than that is if it snaps but doesn't come off the plant and it can actually damage the rest of the plant and you could lose your whole plant. So it's a lot to support when you've got all of that going on. If you've got less branches, less to support. However, I said there were two negatives to this. Firstly, do not be overzealous, okay? No Edward scissor hands here. Be careful about how much you're taking off the plants because the plant still needs to have enough foliage and greenery to be able to photosynthesize and feed itself, okay? And secondly, be careful that you don't prune a branch that's got all the fruit you're wanting to keep because when it's messy, it can get hard to see. So there are my reasons why you might consider doing this or things that might put you off doing it. Let's go on to how we're going to actually do it now. In the space, I don't know how I'm going to do it. First thing then, timing. You're wanting to do this kind of round about midsummer or just after midsummer because that's when the plants are really established and they'll cope with being pruned because pruning plants does give them a little bit of stress. Okay, so you want them to be nice and established and strong. Secondly, we're going to target specific branches. So I'm going to do it like this. The first thing I'm going to do, the first stage, is I'm going to look around my plant and I'm going to decide which are the big, healthy branches or stems that I'm going to keep. Okay, And I'm going to say which are the ones that are not as healthy, not producing, that I'm going to take off. Now I always start from the bottom. So I've got all these ones at the bottom here that I'm going to take off. And clip them in as neat as you can and it goes in the bucket. Always keep tidy because if you leave dying sort of leaves, foliage and things in your greenhouse, you're going to attract pests. Bucket. So again, I'm going to keep going around this base and tidy up and from the bottom up so I can see. Now the next thing I'm going to do then is inside the plant, are there any crossing branches? Because they can rub and then get a wound and that can have disease. So if there's anything in there that's rubbing, I'm going to take those off. So I can see then that I've got a stem in the centre here that's catching on everything else. So I'm going to take that out. This one right here. And again, I'm going to take it right down to the base. Um, I've got another one at the back that I'm going to do the same thing with. And here, because it's at the back, it's that being careful not to prune the wrong branch. It can be difficult to get in. There we go. So I've got two main strong stems and I've got this flimsy little one here. So this is where I can make a decision and say, am I going to keep this one? It's a lot smaller than the others, so it will take longer to produce than the others have. So that's the first thing. But also, it's grown out this way, so that's going to need a lot of support once it's got lots of fruit on it. That is one of the ones that I usually lose, is the ones that are coming out this way. So I'm going to take it off on this plant. Okay, that leaves me with these two really strong stems. I'm going to keep these two, so I'm going to take this one to two. However, as I go up the plant, I can see that those stems are forking quite a lot. So again, I'm just going to have a check. Anything that's crossing, I'm going to take out. Just to help with airflow and to prevent any kind of wound to let disease in. That's not bad. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for anything that's damaged. So I've got a leaf here that's been folded over. I'm going to take that off. Um, and other than that, it's not too bad at the moment. And I'm just going to tidy up around the bottom because again, airflow around the soil level. 
There we go. I'm going to stop here to give you a little bit of a tip. So I've left quite a heavy canopy on the top, but I've got all of this gap for airflow and light in the centre. The reason I've left quite a heavy canopy on this is because I've discovered over the last few years that the King of the North peppers get particularly badly scalded by the sun. Even here in Scotland, I've never had any other plants that have had sun scald on them, only my King of the North peppers. So I'm leaving a good bit of canopy to protect these little fruits that are underneath, just to give them a bit of shade. Okay. Now secondly, I've left this at two stems. You will find with some professional growers they'll actually take a pepper to a single stem and they'll grow that one single stem in exactly the same way that we grow cotton tomatoes. They'll support it up a string or a cane and they'll just allow this one very tall stem. I'm going to stick with these two here. I may come back at a later date and do a bit more pruning. I'll just be keeping an eye and see how it goes. But that means I've only got those two stems to support on this plant. So let's have a look at some of the other plants and see how I'm going to do it on them. Now with this second one, it's the same again. I can see that it's got one of these branches that are jutting out here. There's not so much in the way around the bottom. I'm just going to tidy up. Okay. This leaf here, I'm going to take off for just now because it will just let me see what I'm doing. But do you remember I said don't go Edward scissor hands? So I'm not just going to keep taking leaves off to make it easier. I'm being quite careful about this. Now I can see this guy has got two big strong stems and the same again it's got this third stem that's shooting out this way and it's quite a strong looking stem whereas the one on this plant was quite juvenile. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this stem on on this plant but I'm going to really keep an eye and I'm probably going to reduce the production on it so that it doesn't have the same risk of snapping. But it will then let me show you a plant that's got two stems and a plant that's got three and we can see how they do. But I'm still going to look around. There's an awful lot of foliage at the back here that's touching. So I'm going to take some of that out because where you've got things touching and crossing over, that can transfer pests and disease really easily. Um, what's in here? And again, I'm just going through and just keeping an eye on leaves. Are there any problems? Is there anything that looks damaged? I'm going to have to come round this way. I'm going to leave that one as it is there. It's not quite as a hard prune as that one got, but like I say, I'm going to keep an eye. I may come back and prune more. But for a start, I've got two stems on this plant, three stems on this plant that will need to be supported. So we'll keep an eye and see how those go. Now, I'm not going to touch Steve because I don't know that plant well enough yet, but I've got another one here that I can now have a check of. Oh, we have only been in here 10 minutes and it's unbearably hot already. So let's have a look at this plant then. First things first. There's a lot of touching here, so I'm probably going to have to look at this and say right. Uh, but it has one really, really good strong stem, really straight. One strong stem at the back, so that's two good ones, but it's got a lot of these little juvenile stems, so I'm going to take some of them out. There's another easily three or four in there that I'm just going to get rid of. So let's see. That one in the middle, I'm going to take out so that it opens up the centre. And there's another one there in the centre I'm going to take. I 
and then that lets me see so all this stuff that's at the bottom I'm going to take that Okay, so already we can see there's a lot more airflow, a lot more space. So that's a good thing. And it's letting me see what's going on here. Okay, uh, there's another little branch at the back here I'm going to take. There we go. So I've got one here, one there. Um... Do, 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 do. Right, okay, here's the bit that is heartbreaking and I know a lot of you will struggle with. This one has a little pepper on it that's quite advanced. This one has a little pepper that's not as advanced. This one has a couple of little peppers. So sometimes it's hard because you look at it and think, oh, I don't want to take that branch off, it's got a pepper on it. But you've got to think about this as being the long-term good. Um, so this one's coming off, the one that's coming from the centre, because he's just getting tangled up with this pepper plant here. So he is going. Again, I want to make space. I don't want the plants touching when they don't have to be. Um, do I want to keep four branches on that? Let's go. It's a good test, isn't it? We've got two branches, three branches. We'll leave four branches on this one, OK? Um, I'm going to just tidy up some of the leaves a little bit because even from here I can see it's all messy. Now I'm going to take some off Steve because it's the join between the two plants but I'm not going to prune Steve in the same way. And again there's a lot at the back I can see here that are all sitting on the plants at the back. We'll just get a bit of space and air. Again, this one's rubbing on the aubergine, so we'll take it off. And big one here. Now the thing is, you'll see me taking leaves off and you might think, oh, there's no need for that. Pepper leaves will get very, very big, so you will probably end up pruning these leaves as well because they'll just be getting everywhere, they'll be crossing. And you want, basically, to just be able to see through the plant. So that is it, that, it's that easy. And I hope it's helped to see me do this so that you can see that it's not a big, scary, stressful thing at all. Now, as I said, you don't need to do this. It can help because now I can see my plants better. I can keep an eye on them, make sure they're healthy. I can see pests to deal with that quickly. It lets air flow through, which will help to prevent spreading diseases and fungus and things. Um, I've kept a decent canopy on them all, so that gives the peppers or the actual pepper fruit some shade. And that's it. Now, one of the things you'll notice is I haven't called this a hard prune. You will see a lot of people talking about giving their summer, uh, giving their peppers a hard prune in summer. A hard prune is when you really take it right back to two, maybe one stem. I haven't done that. You can see I've still left quite a lot on the plants. But yeah, I think this will be fine for now. And as always, I will keep you guys up to date on these on pepper with two branches, three branches and four branches. But what I need to do now, before I get any nice big fruit on them, is I have to think about how I'm going to support everything and get that in place now before it gets too awkward. Now, earlier on, I mentioned that I had done a big experiment that took longer than a year where I was looking at topping peppers and overwintering peppers and that kind of thing. If that's something you'd be interested in, there's a whole playlist of videos and I'll link that over here for you now. So go and watch that if you want to see all my exploits from the last couple of years of Pepper Grown. Hope that was interesting, folks. See ya!